Apologies for that break in transmission. Okay, it was to gather more strength for the program. All right, um, my pleasure to invite to come up to just do a two, three minutes um, light of the arena, a distinguished comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Larry J. A round of applause for him, please, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, my very distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I go by the name of Larry Waju Gregory, a.k.a. Larry J. Um, I'll be your comedian for today. This is not the part where I start to crack jokes. I'm just here to lighten the mood a bit. But ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you all to know that this fantastic city of Lagos is one of the best we have in the whole of Nigeria. Good big shout out to our governor, Babajide Sonolu. Thank you very much, sir. A round of applause for him. Yeah. Daddy, we have seen again. Remember the last time we saw in VI, you said, Larry, go out. Don't worry, I will see you. I thought you will see me. You have not seen me then. Now you have seen me again. Daddy, you will see me in real life. This scene from our fire is painful. But ladies and gentlemen, and like I always tell people, please, for those who are coming all the way from outside Lagos, Lagos is a fantastic place to be. Lagos is one of the best places you can ever be. When I say that, I mean in, ev I mean in every ramification. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to crave indulgence. No matter how stranded you are, our governor is not the one selling things for you in traffic. Whatever you find in Lagos traffic is not your own. It is not your own. Don't buy it. It is not your own. I bought power bank in traffic the other day. It was my phone that was charging the power bank. It is not your own. It is not your own. I bought sardine in traffic. They told me the normal sardine you find it for 300 naira at every supermarket. Ladies and gentlemen, in traffic they were selling it for 120. Instead of me to buy one or two to go and test it, I bought 24, two dozen. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the first time in my entire life that I opened sardine. I did not see fish inside. I saw four mama. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not your own. I even went see. See, you know the most interesting part of Lagos State is the fact that we are internationally known. I went to Heathrow Airport. You know when you are waiting for when you are waiting for when you are waiting to board. You know that place you you see them selling perfume and the rest of it. I met a lady there. She was like, "Oh, would you like to try some?" She told me in a very polite way. I was looking for a way to tell her, I'm a Nigerian, no, I'm a Lagosian. The way we use perfume is different from the way you people are using it. Especially if we are not the one that bought it. See, when you buy a perfume, the way you use it will be like, and that's it. But when you are borrowing it, you will spray the perfume as if mosquitoes are living inside your body. Ladies and gentlemen, I was looking for a way to tell this auntie at Heathrow Airport that please, so, this thing you are asking me to do is dangerous because I've not paid for it. She said, no, go ahead, just use it. And then I started. She was like, no, 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 no. I said, yes, 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 yes. She was like, why are you doing it like that? I said, that's the way we do it, where I come from. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time I, I love the perfume, I love the smell. I love the way it made me feel. I now went ahead to check for the price of this perfume. By the time I looked at it, it was 500 pounds. The Lagos in me came out. Ladies and gentlemen, I converted 500 pounds to Naira, and I realized I cannot be using half of my heart strength on my body. It is not proper. Even my mother will not be proud of me. So I told myself, I said, Larry, you have to honor this perfume. I honored the perfume. I took a picture with the perfume. Ladies and gentlemen, I took, as in, I used the picture as the DP of my phone. Ladies and gentlemen, I came back to Lagos. On my way to the island, when I got to Onikan, I saw some boys holding some things in their hand in the traffic. 
I said, what is this? I told my friend, this is the same perfume we saw, I saw in Heathrow that was using that. He said, you like the way I smell. This is it. My friend was like, no, Larry, is not this. I said, this is it. I showed it to him on my phone. He was like, oh, wow, fantastic. I said, this perfume is very expensive. And then I beckoned on the person selling it. I said, please, how much is this perfume? The man told me, this perfume is very expensive. But I said, I know. I said, how much is it? He said, it is 3,500 Naira. I said, wow, what God cannot do does not exist. In Heathrow, it is 500 pounds. In the traffic, it is 3,500 naira. Ladies and gentlemen, I said, guy, please reduce the price for me. I was bargaining with him and he told me, you know what, because you are buying for you and your friend, I will sell it for you for 1,250. I bought two. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask this question. Have you ever used perfume and you are the one asking people if they can smell you? I used that perfume that day. I was the one asking people, hey, Josh, they say, no, no, no. They say, no, no. They say I, I use it. They say it's not smelling. I went back inside. I sprayed it again. I came out. I said, can you smell me now? They say, Larry, we cannot smell you. I went back inside. I sprayed it again. I said, can you smell me now? They say, we cannot smell you. One of my friends that I know that God will judge on the last day, he told me, he said, Larry, maybe it's one of those perfumes that we not smell now. It only smell when he, after a few hours. Ladies and gentlemen, I went ahead. I left my house. I got to my event, unknowing to me what I was smelling like. I wasn't smelling anything. All I just noticed that people were telling me, ah, Larry, get well soon, no. God will help you. Get well soon, no. God will help you. By the time, by the time I went to meet my friend, I said, what is, why are people telling me God will help me get well soon? He said, Larry, you are smelling for hospital Isaac. Since that day, I did not buy anything in traffic again. And please, I would like to tell you people this. It's not like... It's not like, because I can see some of my friends are here, um, and I'm very, very proud of him. Um, my friend Sunde is here. He used to be the first position in our um, school when I was back, when I was younger. Um, and there's one thing about Sunde, he does not know how not to be the first position. And I am a very humble person by nature, by look. If you look at me well, you know this guy is a very humble guy. And there are 50 people in our class, and... I realized that no matter how much I try, no matter how much I read, I will still be 50. You understand? Out of 50 students, I'm 50. And then my friends were now like, ah, Larry, try. I tried, I read, I will still now fall on that same 50. I'm not like, why am I even reading again? Because when God has said your destiny is number 50, why are you arguing with God? Do you understand? I was 50th position to the extent that even the person carrying 49 was advising me, like, Larry, oh, they try now, they try now. And then I now told him, you know what, let's do tutorial together. Me, 50, him, 49, we did tutorial. That was the first time in my life I realized that. You see this thing, they say that two heads is better than one. See, if the two heads is not correct, there's no head deal. Ladies and gentlemen, the two of us did tutorial. I was reading. He, I read. He asked me a question. I cannot answer. He read. I asked him a question. He cannot answer. So we we're not like, hmm, this head, there's no head deal. Let's carry expo. So we decided to cheat. Ladies and gentlemen, we cheated... And by the grace of God, it was a successful one. The only mistake we made was that we mistakenly submitted the expo. We now carried the answer sheet out. So him that was carrying 49, they now give the two of us 50-50. And ladies and gentlemen, as I scored 50 and my mother heard what happened, I even tried to cheat and I still scored 50. She was very angry. She was like, Larry, we have to do something about this. This is not suitable for you. This is not what God wants you to be in life. And ladies and gentlemen, she said to me, if you carry between first and tenth position, I'll give you whatever you need. And she asked me, what do you want? Ladies and gentlemen, I told her I wanted to travel out of Nigeria. And she said, no problem. She would do it for me. And to the glory of God, my father changed my school and I came out with flying colors. I was the tenth position in my whole class. I believe I deserve a round of applause. Please put your hands together for me. I did very well. I came out and with flying colors, I was in the 10th position. I was at the airport with my mother. We were about to board until one evil spirit entered my mother. She now asked me, she said, she said, Larry, how many people are in your class? And I told her we are 10. That was the first time in my life I experienced deportation without immigration. She sent me back home. Ladies and gentlemen, that was just an light note. Um, we'll be moving forward from here, and then when I come back, we'll have comedy proper. Thank you very much for your time. God bless you.
you know, immediately he said he came tenth in class. Uh, my first question was, so how many were you in class? However, one of the things he talked about that is no longer tolerated is um, that selling in traffic, the perfume thing. You can't try it now. The Lagos State Rescue Team will pack you as one of the destitutes and put you in Majidu. So don't please risk it. Just let's keep it as that. Of course, Larry J is not the only one that knows how to tickle people here. Um, there are lots, um, there are more people here. There's a, a young gentleman here, but I don't know. I don't know his own position, um, gifted mouth. He will come up um, very shortly. He would also come up. Um, indeed, it is an evening that we're going to have a lot, a lot of fun. Um, we have so much entertainment going down. We. Mr. Governor, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babaji de Olu, I just wanted to let you know that your brother and friend is here with us all the way from Niger State. The Governor of Niger State, His Excellency Al Haji Abubakar Sani Bailu. Please can we applaud His Excellency? We thank you very much, sir, for being here this evening. I just want um, His Excellency to take a seat before Gifted Mouth comes to tell us his own beat. And while Gifted Mouth is coming, um, I know that the Aristos Band is also in the house and they are getting ready. So um, immediately after Gifted Mouth, um, Aristos Band will treat all of us to what they know how to do best, and that is good music. Um, this one is tamper-proof, security features in place, and I can bet each and every one of us will want to dance. Gifted Mouth, where are you? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, please can we put our hands together for ourselves? Uh, I know the event is just starting and I know that we're enjoying ourselves already. Please can we put our hands together for Larry J. He's been amazing. Made us laugh. Uh, I was laughing backstage when Larry J. was talking about traffic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are some people in this Lagos that I believe that they are not supposed to be in Lagos. I know that you people are scared of people that sell stuff inside traffic, but please, there are another set of people that I know that our governor should take care of. There are those people inside Computer Village. Ah, uh, they have no fear of God. Ladies and gentlemen, two weeks ago, I bought a wristwatch inside Computer Village, Omega wristwatch. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, inside, normally Omega wristwatch is being sold for 52,000 naira, but I bought it inside Computer Village for 1.5. It was when I got home that I checked the name. It was not Omega that I bought. It was Omagao. <laughs> Please can you put your hands together for Gifted Mouth, even as I specially recognize and welcome the number one banker in Nigeria, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, C-O-N, F-C-I-B. Please can we applaud the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. We thank you very much, sir. Adedeji. Thank you very much. Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture may I kindly invite to give the opening prayer for these August and auspicious occasion, the first vice president 
Chartered Institute of Bankers, Nigeria, Dr. Kenneth Okwara, PhD, FCIB. A round of applause for him as he comes forward to give the opening prayer to signal the commencement of this program. Thank you, sir. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, the eternal rock of ages, we want to thank you for this day that you have made. You say we shall rejoice and be glad. We thank you for this great country, Nigeria. We thank you for Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. As we assemble today to wind down for this annual bankers dinner, we ask that you take absolute control, that at the end of this day, the glory and the honor will be returned back to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mr. Governor, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwolu, his counterpart all the way from Niger State, His Excellency Al Haji Abubakar Sani Bailu, the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, CON SCIB, the President and Chairman of Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. Dr. Bayo Olubemi, FCIB, and of course, his very beautiful wife, Mrs. Fadekemi Olubemi, the chairman, body of bank CEOs, and group managing director, chief executive officer, Access Bank PLC, Dr. Herbert Wigwe, FCIB, and members of the organizing committee here present. The chairman, 56th annual bankers dinner, Organizing Committee and Group Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer, Wema Bank PLC, Mr. Ademola Adebisi FCIB, the British High Commission, Mr. Ben Lewin Jones, the Managing Director, Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, Mr. Hassan Bailo FCIB, and Executive Directors here present. The first Vice President, Dr. Kenneth Okbara, PhD FCIB. The second Vice President, Professor Pius Deji Olariwaju. The National Treasurer, Mr. Dele Alabi, FCIB. The Registrar Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Sheye Awojobi, FCIB. My Lords, Temporal and Spiritual here present our esteemed past president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, here present, captains of industries and managing directors of banks, here present, members of the diplomatic corps, here present, presidents of professional bodies, here present, members of the CIBN, fellows, associates, honorary senior members, microfinance certified bankers, and all other categories of memberships of Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, here present, members of the banking community, here present, management and staff of the CIBN, distinguished guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, once again I say good evening to each and every one of us and welcome to the 56th Annual Bankers Dina, holding here in Lagos. I always love to tell people at any event such as this, and I emphasize it, that this is Lagos. You're very welcome to the center of excellence, the state of aquatic splendor. Please can we put our hands together for the city that never goes to sleep in Nigeria. Thank you. At this point in time, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we will be having a little word from my colleague here, 
and he is going to tell us what's next on the program. Adedeji Odulesi. Thank you very much. Uh, just to say that you welcome to this August and auspicious occasion, and um, myself and Busola Kukoy will be co anchoring this program. My name is, as she said, Adedeji Odulesi, and we want to assure you that this night will be full of fond memories. Thank you very much. I hand over to her. And to formally welcome each and every one of us, it is an honor and indeed a privilege to welcome to the microphone the President, Chairman of Council, CIBN. Please can we applaud very resoundingly Dr. Bayo Olubemi, FCIB. Thank you, Buki and Adedeji. I try as much as possible to stand on the existing protocols already, uh, already established because of our time. However, honor must be given to those who honor our duty. The governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sawolu, His Excellency, the Governor of Niger State, Alaji Abubakar Sani Belo, the Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, CONFCIB, and the Committee of Governors here present, the Managing Director of NDIC, Mr. Hazan Belo, FCIB, and all EDs of NDIC here present, the first Vice President of CIBN, Dr. Kenneth Okpara, PhD FCIB, the second vice president, Professor Pius Oladeji Olanrewaju, PhD FCIB, the national treasurer, Mr. Adeli Alabi, FCIB, the registrar CEO, Dr. Shaya Ojabi, FCIB, our esteemed past presidents, chairman body of bank CEOs, Dr. Wigwe Abbott, FCIB, Chairman Organizing Committee of the 56th Annual Bankers' Dinner, Mr. Ademola Adebishe, FCIB, and the Beautiful Wife, Chairman and Managing Directors of C and CEOs of banks and other financial institutions here present, my beautiful wife, Mrs. Fadeke Olubemi, and I want to say I stand on other already established protocols. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Governing Council, members, management, and staff of our great institute, I feel greatly honored and privileged to welcome you all to the 56th Annual Bankers' Dinner, taking place today, November 26, 2021, at the Balmora Convention Center, Federal Palace Hotel, Victoria Land, Lagos. Given that we are in the new normal and you need to Observe COVID-19 protocols, arrangements were also made for some of our stakeholders to join us virtually, and they are all over the world uh, with us today. May I therefore express my sincere appreciation to you all for honoring our invitation despite your very, very busy schedules. As you may already know, the annual Bankers Dinner is an event where stakeholders in the banking industry and key economic actors, inclusive of regulators, operators, government, customers, and the business community, are afforded the opportunity to, conv to convivially let their ear down and socially network uh, once in a year. The platform also promotes and provides an atmosphere to reflect on the developments in the banking industry and the economy over the past year while gaining insights into the incoming year 2022. At this juncture, let me wholeheartedly appreciate the Governor, Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin M. Fiele, CONFCIB, the man of the moment, who has indeed remained a strong pillar of support for the Institute in the accumulation of our statutory mandate. 
traditionally, the annual bankers' dinner is a CBN Governor's Day because it affords stakeholders the real privilege of interacting and listening to Mr. Governor as he examines critical issues and fundamentals which has affected the banking industry within the year, especially this year, 2021, as expected. He will also be sharing perspective on economic and financial market developments over the past year and provide an outlook on the economy for the year ahead. I would therefore like to use this medium to acknowledge and express our ap appreciation to you, sir, Mr. Governor of CBN, for your contribution to the Institute over the years, especially since the beginning of this year and for your esteemed presence at this event. This year, we are greatly privileged to have several distinguished guests who have made the time out to join us. Tonight, we are honored to welcome our governor, the governor of, state, uh, governor of Lagos State, the Center of Excellence, Mr. Babajide Sanwolu, and of course, the executive governor of Niger State, His Excellency, Alaji Abaka Sonebelu. We are also expecting uh, the Governor of Ogun State, His Excellency Prince Dakwabi Odun. Uh, hopefully, he will join us before we finish. We are also honored to welcome His Excellency, the British Deputy High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Ben Lee Jones, who is expected to propose the toast of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In the same vein, I welcome Dr. Mrs. E.J. Jidema, FIODXCIB, President, Institute of Directors, Nigeria, who will propose the toast for the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. Let me also take a moment to appreciate all the managing directors and CEOs of banks and other financial institutions who have co sponsored this dinner, and particularly those who have made time to be here tonight. Thank you for your unwavering support to your institute. Esteemed audience, the Adult Committee on 2021 Anna Bankers Dinner has put in a lot of effort to ensure that this dinner is successful. Permit me, therefore, to express my sincere appreciation to the committee chairman, Mr. Ademola Adebishe, FCIB, GMD CEO, Wama Bank PLC, and the other members of the committee for their tremendous efforts over the past few weeks. It is pertinent to mention that under the current leadership of the Adult Committee, several new initiatives have been introduced to make it a night to celebrate. Thank you very much. Um, sorry for that uh, break in transmission. One of such initiatives is the award for unsung COVID-19 heroes in the banking industry. This award is specifically, specifically designed to honor the serving individuals that step up beyond the call of duty in the fight against COVID-19 and who ensure business continues. values of our industry. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like to congratulate the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria on the official launch of e-Naira 
Africa's first central bank digital currency, CBDC, whose principal aim is to deepen financial inclusion and integrate millions of unbanked Nigerians into the banking system. While the modality for the operation is being fine-tuned, I have no doubt in my mind that it is a welcome development and a step in the right direction. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, since taking on the mantle of leadership of our revered institute in May 2020, we have continued to build on the solid foundation laid by our predecessors, rooted in the tradition of constantly leaning forward into the future. We have explored new and uncharted territories, expanding the frontiers of our institute in our avowed resolve to build a future, a future forward institute. In the light of this, therefore, some initiatives and achievements recorded this year have been collated and will be mentioned during a brief but informative documentary to be shared with you shortly. Suffice to say that this is my last dinner as the President and Chairman of Council of the Institute as I will be handing over the mantle of leadership in May 2022. May I pause to appreciate once again the Governor of Lagos State who has made it a point of duty to attend most of the programs we invited him to during my tenure. The annual conference of uh, annual bankers conference, he was here twice, and the annual dinner uh, is being here the second time. It's, it is unprecedented in the annals of this uh, institution. Okay, thank you, Mr. Governor. God bless you, sir. And of course, the Governor of Central Bank is his program, is always around and is always with us and always helping us to get our subscription and uh, financial support all the time. Thank you, Mr. Governor. I therefore like to thank you all for your support in the implementation of the eight team agenda of my administration. I want to assure you that the Institute will continue to devote its resources to the development of competencies while strengthening observance of ethics and professionalism in the banking industry. In conclusion, may I take this opportunity to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas, splendid and prosperous New Year in advance. Please sit back, relax, and let us enjoy each other's company. Thank you all for your rapt attention. Good evening. Thank you very much. President, Chairman of Council, Dr. Bayo Ulubemi, FCIB. A round of applause once again for him. Yes, um, it's just welcomed us to this August and auspicious occasion. And once again, we want to welcome everybody to this occasion. And um, like we said, it's a dinner. And we wish everyone a very wonderful evening. Come on, dit en français, c'est bonsoir et bienvenue au programme d'aujourd'hui organisé par. CIBN et nous croyons que vous allez trouver le programme de cette nuit très 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 intéressant et fantastique. Comme nous avons dit, il y a beaucoup de choses à manger, il y a beaucoup de choses à voir. Nous n'avons pas de problème ici à Lagos, le centre d'excellence. Si vous comprenez ça, vous pouvez applaudir une fois encore. Uh, guten, ta, uh, guten Abend, meine Damen und Herren, und herzlich willkommen. Uh, we sind hier à Lagos. Es gibt kein Problem, es gibt viele Dinge zu hören, zu essen und zu trinken. Kiro, uh, uh, donc, je voudrais dire danke. Uh, guten, uh, buenos tardes, señora y señores. Uh, estoy muy feliz de estar aquí. Quiero aprovechar esta oportunidad a decir bienvenidos a todos. Muchas gracias. To yanzu alegos a muke muna somo geisha kuku da kuzo daga kas bina jiho imu dei adei gumna imu daga bina Niger State dei zonan watu is excellence alhaji Dr Abubakar Sani belu mungida imzo arenka ala isaka makada alihiri muna kuma patiche wa dukam kuda kuzo na taruna dina zaku jida inuwa na shiri dumi haka ku kasa nchitari demu akwe abinchi fala fala akwe abu wanda zangu jifala fala ku kasa nchitari demu ala isaka mkuda alihiri kamar masuma gana kanche muna patiche wa kolia zata bia kudin sabulu na gude kore akuba da adaba uluru majikari 
umu ne mi ndi gbe kele omu nu ayin ji ohiro ma na batu nu na nno kon kita e were mo le na na ihe ni lai nge me ne bochi kita ga ga nko ma ndi bu ayin ji reba insobo adigi e doro ma ya na ihe ni le ga ga nko ma maka nka kan na ga nusuru nusuru kan kele omu ayin igbo kwenu igbo kwenu kwezi onu ayin mekwa dalo nu alako ton wa ki gugu yin elede yoba pe e ka le se ka wo si aye ta sale yo da mi loju gugu abala ito ni ama agbadun to ba ri bi e me ko e je ka ma lo ni she sent tell me oruko mi ni adedeji odulesi yoruba ati jebu onbele thank you very much uh, excellencies very distinguished ladies and gentlemen we'll be fasting this event tonight and it's my pleasure to invite to give the operator's remarks the chairman body of banks CEOs and the group managing director Access Bank PLC, Mr. Herbert Wigwe, FCIB. Brilliant, vibrant, and radiant personality. Please put your hands together for him as he comes forward. Thank you very much. Our host governor, the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, governor of Niger State, Alaji Abuakar Sani Bello, of course our own governor, governor of Central Bank, Mr. Gordon Emepele, our respected deputy governors of the Central Bank, uh, please permit me to stand on existing protocols. I think for me, today's task is easy. First of all, it's just to express my sincere appreciation and welcome you all to this 56th Annual Bankers' Dinner 2021. As has been said already, it's an evening where we typically would lay our head down and let go of the serious business of banking that we are known for. But I think tonight is perhaps even a lot more important. It's important because it's a time for us to also reflect on some of the great things which we've done for the country over the past 20 months which have been particularly, particularly difficult. As an industry, we've gone through severe issues, we've gone through various socio-economic events resulting in severe economic contraction, but no one could have foreseen that once-in-a-lifetime virus or pandemic and the longevity of the COVID-19. In fact, rumor had it that there are several other variants coming out now. We do hope that it's not propaganda and that all of those things just stop at least until we get into the new year and then we think of how to deal with it. But um, whatever happened in the last 20 months, I think one of the great things that has come out is the fact that all of us as Nigerians and as bankers uh, will never see our country go through the difficulty that people would have expected. And so we acted very swiftly and deliberately. As bankers, we galvanized other private sector business leaders to form the coalition against COVID-19, which is called CACOVID. CACOVID supported the federal government efforts by raising funds from private donors to increase testing capacity. The coalition opened several more PCR labs, supplied about 390,000 test kits, and many other critical supplies, including protective, personal protective equipment. We worked with the government and supported the Federal Aviation Authority of Nigeria the Civil Aviation Authority and the Port Health facilities in reopening our airports. It's easy to forget, but we cushioned the impact of the lockdown for 10 million vulnerable Nigerians, which basically represents about 1.7 million households. Let's face it, the outbreak of that pandemic hit us very hard. We saw declines in consumption, investments, and net exports. And we found ourselves in a contracting GDP by about 6.1% by the end of the second quarter, even though the government tried to spend a bit of money to try and resolve all of this. Bottom line, we found ourselves in a recession or a second recession within five years. You know, people have asked, you know, how well did we do as an industry? I think we need to actually celebrate ourselves because I've not seen any country where the private sector works together with government to basically fight this pandemic. If there was... 
the banking community stood very, very tall. As much as we are criticized by the public, I think one of the greatest things that happened to us is the privilege, the great privilege, to be able to support to get our country out of that pandemic. So, in last September, at the Banking and Finance Conference, we decided to theme it Economic Recovery, Transformation and Inclusion. We involved the Millennium Generation, who are pushing to ensure real changes occur as they move into key positions for continuing the development of our nation. We discussed several things, even the most contentious things around cryptocurrency that a lot of them seem to be interested in, and the whole idea was for us to begin to see and understand where the future is headed, what young people are thinking, and try to create the boundaries, all right, to ensure that we have a robust economy. But to the team that made the conference a success, you are truly the real MVPs. Thank you very much. The 2021 Banking and Finance Conference may be over, but its impact is still reverberating across the entire nation. We had more than 1 billion views and almost 500 million participants from different parts of the world. And I think we deserve a very strong round of applause. And now a huge recognition is due to all my colleagues in the industry who stepped up and contributed financially and technically to support our government in pouring the economy back to life. You know, I discussed with a couple of our friends who have retired, and while they were serving, some of them may have complained, oh my goodness, we are always having to contribute to one thing or the other. But I think now that they've retired and seen how vulnerable things are outside, quite frankly, everybody has agreed that, quite, that there is nothing greater than the privilege to support our country. But to you all who are here, you have made a great, you've made tremendous difference, and your support has offered many lifelines across the country. On behalf of the many Nigerians whose lives were positively impacted by your noble initiatives, we all say a huge, huge thank you. And there are several more acknowledgments I wish to make. The National Theatre Project is one that will revolutionize the Nigerian entertainment industry and create thousands of jobs, uh, thousands of jobs. It comes at a huge cost, which is carried 100% by the banking industry. And again, I say thank you. <laughs> Just before the governor walked in, the deputy governor of Central Bank, Mrs. Aisha Ahmad, was whispering to Lagos State Governor about some people who were creating problems for us. We must all find an opportunity to resolve all of these fights. Whether it is fighting with government to make sure that things go right, or fighting with the host communities who are trying to disturb things, or in fact fighting with lawyers sometimes in meetings, all right? But I think the most important thing is that we have just one thing at the back of our mind. How do we make Nigeria a much greater, a much better place to be? I want to thank the Chartered Institute of Bankers for its support and initiatives. I want to thank the President and Chairman of Council, Bayo Williams Ulubemi Doctor, and for his leadership, and the Register Cheye Awojobi PhD, it was gotten very recently, so he doesn't fail to put it against his, his name these days. But I want to thank you both for the setting the pace in the institution. <laughs> Last but not the least, while other economies around the world were being brought down to their knees by the pandemic, one man and his team were busy implementing initiatives and interventions in different sectors, some of them orthodox economic means, others not orthodox, that have helped to buoy up the Nigerian economy. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele. Even though we received a lot of pain from him, we have to acknowledge him. I've had different banks say different things. Merchant banks say that their CRR is 100% of their deposits. People shout, is this economics or is it not economics? Mr. Mepele is just laser focused on trying to make sure that things get, up, get better for all of us. Governor, the initiatives that you and your team introduced have helped to stabilize the economy and bring about modest growth in GDP of about 5% and 4% in Q2 and Q3. May I invite all of us to give our governor a much deserved standing ovation.
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we can all feel proud at the way we have all supported our country during this difficult time. We pray that this new variant that I'm talking about should just end where it came from, whether it's in South Africa or England, because we don't want any more trouble. But I think we deserve this evening, this evening of fun and fine dining. I want to thank you all so very much. God bless you. Please can we applaud Dr. Herbert Wigway once again. <laughs> Mr. Governor, the Governor of Lagos State, and his Niger State counterpart, the CBN Governor, all cuts is duly extended. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, moving on at the Stina, I'd just like to quickly let us know that we'll be going on to a short documentary of a chronicle of events that has gone round the banking system, the financial system, and indeed the economy of this great nation in the last one year. And I will quickly quote from an essay written by Hendis Smith that banks are to the economy what hearts are to the human body. This, they are the cycle necessary to make capital through the whole, and they are barely noticed until pressure necessity or crisis erupts. I think all bankers who have made the banking system very functional even in the face of COVID pandemic deserve a round of applause as I invite the documentary on a chronicle of events. 2021 Annual Bankers Dinner Documentary Highlights of major macroeconomic trends in Nigeria and the Nigerian banking industry in 2021. The year 2021 has proven to be one of economic recovery. This is particularly evident in the growth of the global and Nigerian economies over the last 11 months. On the global front, the International Monetary Fund IMF reports a 5.9% growth rate in world output in 2021. This is compared to the output of minus 3.1% in 2020. More specifically, economic powerhouses such as China and the United States experienced an increment in GDP growth in 2021. The Chinese economy grew by 7.9% in Q2, while the U.S. economy grew by 2% in Q3 this year. There was also a rebound of economic output in Europe along with international trade. In Nigeria, the economy also witnessed consistent economic growth in the year under review, growing by 0.51% in Q1 and 5.01% in Q2 of 2021. In a bid to further drive economic recovery, the Nigerian Federal Executive Council within the year approved a five-year National Development Plan 2021-2025 with an investment worth 348.7 trillion naira. The key focus of the plan is on economic growth and development, infrastructure, public administration, human capital development, social development, and regional development. The plan is expected to be executed through public-private partnerships with the private sector, contributing 298.3 trillion naira, while the public sector contributes 49.7 trillion naira. Developments in the Nigerian banking sector January 2021 to date. In the period under review, notable developments in the Nigerian banking industry include the following. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, issued Frameworks for the Quick Response QR Code Payments in Nigeria. Frameworks for Regulatory Sandbox Operations in Nigeria. Directives to Deposit Money Banks, DMBs, non-bank financial institutions, NBFIs, and other financial institutions, OFIs, for closure of operating account on cryptocurrency in Nigeria. The Central Bank of Nigeria, in collaboration with the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, issued guidelines on the pricing of U.S. dollar charges between mobile network operators and deposit money banks. Other key developments in the industry include Big telecommunication players, MTN and Airtel, 
obtained CBN's license to operate payment service banks in Nigeria. The CBN suspended the sale of forex to Bureau de Change, BDCs. In collaboration with the Bankers Committee, the CBN kick-started the 25 billion Naira National Theatre Creative Hubs for Youth project. All monetary policy parameters and controlling rates were retained for the period under review. Activities of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, in 2021. A series of activities were held which further propelled the Institute towards the attainment of its vision to be a global reference point for skills and conduct in the banking and finance industry. Notable activities in the period under review include the following. The 7th National Economic Outlook 2021. The 7th edition of the event was held virtually on January 19, 2021 and facilitated by the distinguished keynote speaker, Dr. Doyin Salami. Chairman, Presidential Advisory Council, PEAC, and Senior Lecturer, Lagos Business School. Launch of the new syllabi of the Banking Professional Examinations and Certification Program. In recognition of the changing business landscape and the transformation that has taken place in the banking industry, the Institute developed and launched its new syllabus for the Banking Professional Examinations on Tuesday, March 30, 2021. The new syllabus has been fortified with contents that are contemporary and will address emerging issues in the world of banking and finance. Examination Administration In addition to the computer-based testing, CBT, which the Institute has engaged in the running of its examinations for a while, the Institute is stepping forward to introduce online proctored examinations. This would enable students take the Institute's examinations from any part of the globe at their convenience without mortgaging the integrity of the examinations. Competency Framework During the period under review, the Institute was appointed as the Secretariat of the Bankers' Committee Subcommittee on Competency and Industry Standards. Subsequently, a workshop for key stakeholders on the competency requirements in the Nigerian banking industry was organized by the Subcommittee on Competency and Industry Standards on Tuesday, October 12, 2021 at the Federal Palace Hotel, Victoria Island, Lagos. The hybrid event was designed to identify and discuss the gaps in the current competency framework and proffer recommendations and input which would aid the ongoing review process of the framework by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Relaunch of the CIBN Mentoring Scheme the banking industry is central to the economy and, as such, maintaining high ethical and professional standards among practitioners, especially the young, upcoming bankers, is critical to ensuring sustainability, safety and soundness of the industry. To this end, there was an apparent need for a mentoring scheme where young bankers would be groomed by senior experienced practitioners in the industry. Mindful of the importance of the scheme to the future of banking, the management and the CIBN Mentoring Advisory Committee ensured the official relaunching on February 18, 2021 with over 600 mentors and mentees dominated by banks for the scheme. The 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference with the theme Economic Recovery, Inclusion and Transformation, the role of banking and finance was held from September 13 to 15, 2021. The event, which was reputed as the largest gathering of banking and finance stakeholders in Africa, had in attendance over 10,000 participants in the two physical locations, Abuja and Lagos, and the online platform. Notable distinguished guests include the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, His Excellency Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, President, Federal Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Mr. Paul Kagame. The 21st National Seminar on Banking and Allied Matters for Judges was held as a hybrid event at the National Judicial Institute with theme, Strengthening the Quality of Judicial Systems and Banking Operations Through Innovations from November 23 to 24, 2021. The event was well attended by several distinguished guests 
including Mr. Horacio Bernandez Neto, President, International Bond Association, among many others. Legacy projects. To further deepen the Institute's collaboration with linkage institutions across the country, the President and Chairman of the Council advocated for the implementation of the Learning Legacy Projects in his acceptance speech as the 21st President Chairman of Council. The Governing Council graciously approved the institution of Learning Legacy Projects in six linked institutions across the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Engagement for Growth As part of the initiatives to deepen the relationship of CIBN with its stakeholders, the President, Chairman of Council, embarked on high-impact stakeholders' engagements with a view to ensuring the growth and development of the banking and finance industry in Nigeria. Notable among them include visits to the executive governors of Oyo, Osho, Bochi and Imo states. The President, Chairman of Council, also had engagements with 15 CIBN branches, including the UK and USA branches. The Graduate Induction and Prize Awards Day Ceremony, held on August 28, 2021, during the event, a total of 380 candidates were inducted as associates, while 291 candidates were inducted as MCIBs. The CIBN Fellowship Investiture The CIBN Fellowship Investiture Ceremony took place on Saturday, October 30, 2021. At the event, a total of 237 individuals were honored. Some honorees included Dr. Ngozi okonjo Wala, FCIB, Director General, World Trade Organization, WTO. Dr. Kingsley Obiora, Deputy Governor, Economic Policy, Central Bank of Nigeria. Mr. Bello Hassan, Managing Director, CEO, the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation. To name a few, advocacy role. In the period under review, the Institute pursued the fulfillment of its advocacy role as the conscience of the industry. Indeed, the year 2021 proved to be an eventful one with strong signs of economic recovery, inclusion and transformation. As we progress towards 2022, we look forward to yet more growth in the banking industry and economy overall. The best is yet to come. Mr. Governor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, the best is yet to come. Can we please applaud once again this chronicle events that have shown the versatility and indeed the dynamism of the Nigerian economy. We thank you very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to invite a man to speak with all of us here at this gathering this evening. A few days ago, he was before 40 lawmakers and he said some things and I will quickly want to quote. Um, he said, our budget is not just one of figures, but one that is to show a socially responsible government. He said further, and I quote, that the need to fit a proper, for a fit and proper federal fiscal framework that will gravitate through federalism for the different constituencies of the country cannot be overemphasized. Therefore, it is a clamor that his state, I'll tell you that state, should be granted a special status. I wish at this point in time, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to invite the most business friendly governor, the most technology survey, technology friendly governor, 
The manual has made the environment very conducive for businesses and indeed for the economy to thrive. If the economy thrives in his state, it has thrived in Nigeria. I welcome to give his goodwill remarks at this dinner, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Governor, Mr. Babajide Olusola Sonwolu. Please can I hear your applause? Please can we applaud him more resoundingly as he comes forward? A versatile and dynamic visionary leader indeed. Another round of applause for my governor. Please applaud him on my behalf. Thank you very much. As you can see, we had to do a quick reordering of the program. Tonight is not for the politicians. It's really indeed for the bankers. And there's no better governor that we all need to sit back and listen to his speech than the governor of the CBN. So I said that indeed there is no keynote, you know, that will come after a goodwill. So the goodwill must come first before we listen to the keynote. If not, my, key, my, my goodwill will mean to nothing because I know that the governor of CBN has a whole lot that he's going to share with us this evening. So please give him a round of applause for that. His Excellency, my very good brother, the Governor of Niger State, Alaji Abubakar Sanibelu, who had just this evening given a whole building to the CIBN to come and have their regional office for North Central in MENA. Thank you very much, Mr. Your Excellency. The Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefile, CON, FCIB, is the only governor that doesn't have any threats come 2023 because he doesn't have any primaries to run. And so he deserves a round of applause again. The German Consul, Consul General, His Excellency, Mr. Bernard Bonn, the Deputy British High Commissioner, Mr. Ben Lewin Jones, the President. Chairman of Council Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, Dr. Bayo Olubemi, FCIB, and his very beautiful wife, Mrs. Fadekemi Olubemi, the Chairman of Body of Bank CEOs and the Group Managing Director of Access Bank, Dr. Harvard Wigwe, FCIB, and members of the organizing committee that are here, the Chairman of the 56th Annual Bankers Dinner, and Group Managing Director of Wema Bank, Mr. Demola at DBC FCIB, the Managing Director of NDIC, Mr. Hassan Bello, another executive of NDIC, the two Deputy Governors of CBN, Mr. Adeshonubi and Mrs. Aisha Hakmet, our esteemed past President of the Council, oh, sorry, of the Institute of Chartered Bankers of Nigeria that are here present, managing directors and chief executives of banks that are here. I can see several of them, female MDs that will have our strong Amazon. Thank you very much. I individually want to acknowledge the MD of Citibank, the MD of Fidelity Bank, and the MD of FCMB. I think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> President and professionals bodies that are here, fellows, associates, honorary senior members of this great issue that are here, members of the banking community, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. What an evening. It's indeed a great honor to attend this event once again. It's an event that brings together who is who and the Nigerian banking and finance industry. As you can see, it's a colorful evening with glitz and glamour in the month of November in the city of aquatic splendor and the heartbeat of the nation, in the centerpiece of Nigeria, in the commercial, economic and financial center of the whole African continent, Lagos. Thank you very much. And so I'm indeed very proud to be part of this large family. 
and I have very fond memories of my years that I spent as an active banker myself and what the industry has indeed transformed to. Let me start by commending the great leadership of the CIBN, past and present, for making this annual event a highly anticipated one, year after year, not only by members, but also by the major stakeholders in the Nigerian economy. Undoubtedly, the financial services industry has not been left untouched by the very deadly COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has presented both threats and opportunities. It has affected businesses negatively in some ways, but also opened up possibilities to do things differently, to evolve new ways of meeting consumer needs and their expectations. It is now up to the entire industry to decide how to build the future of banking and financial services. What are those very important lessons of COVID-19 that has taught everyone? That we must now build into the plans and into our operations. We must actively reflect on this question even as we, as we strive to put the pandemic behind us. Around the world, COVID-19 has led to some of the largest banking stimulus and credit programs ever. Data from the Central Bank of Nigeria shows that this year we have seen record levels of banking credit extended to the private sector. The Central Bank, under the very dogged leadership of the Governor, Mr. Godwin M. Mifley, has left no stone unturned in its determination to ensure that the higher levels of credit are made available to support small, medium, and large businesses in the country. I stand here as a major beneficiary of what the can-do spirit of the Nigerian banking has shown us. I was just explaining to the central bank governor that even at the very recent G20 meeting that was held in Rome, I was privileged to be at the side meeting and the question were asked, how did we do it in Nigeria? And I said to them that there were the lessons and the support that came from the organized private sector that was led by Mr. Governor of CBN himself. And I stand here on behalf of my other colleagues, governors, and everyone in the public sector to thank all of you for your generous contribution, for believing in the strength of we coming together, and for ensuring that indeed we all can work collaboratively and put this pandemic behind us. I think you all deserve a round of applause because at this critical time, we are not talking about profitability. We are talking about how do we save life and how do we build back better for each and every one of us. This saying everything that we need to know about the importance of the banking sector and to the growth of our economy. Credit is, we say, is a lubricant that keeps the wheels of prosperity going and it is a strong intervening hand that has shown its power to lift the struggling economies that have been affected by these diseases and disaster. Nigeria cannot be an exception and we must continue to brainstorm on ways of how we can reduce the cost of credit and the burden to our beneficiaries. Let me at this point also say how delighted I am to note that Mr. Emefile will be addressing this dinner. I have brought out my notes and my writing parts. I know that it has a whole lot to share with us tonight. His insights from the point of view as the number one banker on the land. Let me also use this opportunity to restate our appreciation to him and the entire banking community for the great support that you have offered to my administration and we have received from all of you. It has helped us in coping with the challenges posed by the pandemic and all of the very effect of the aftermath of the answers protests a year ago, a special intervention that must be acknowledged is the one that was targeted at revamping, like my good brother said, the National Arts Theatre, which we are all working towards and which we believe will be building a world-class creative park and will create jobs to tens of thousands of our talented youths. Just a couple of days ago, I presented my 2022 budget to my House of Assembly and it was indeed the biggest budget again that Lagos will be presenting, a 1.3 trillion budget. And of course that budget has in itself expectations of support from all of you men that are here seated. The successful implementation of that budget will largely depend 
on the support that we get from each and every one of you. And for example, in 2021, we were able to restructure the credit terms that we have on our loan book. We were able to reduce very creatively borrowings from like 18, 17 and a half percent to 12 and 12 and a half percent. And no thanks to, to all of you. I did want to appreciate each and every one of you. And what have we done with those savings? We have been able to push more on education and health, on infrastructure, and ensuring that all of our promises around the dividends of democracy is achieved. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, no doubt the coming months and years will be critical to the prosperity of Nigeria and achieving a sustainable economic growth and development. As I noted earlier, we will certainly need to review the traditional economics and monetary models in the face of challenging realities and the desire to achieve maximum impact and the outcome vis-a-vis -vis our policy objectives. But even as we do this, we must never lose sight of our primary mandate as institutions and organizations. The work that we do must reflect positively in the lives of our people and the society that we occupy. We must ensure that the fundamental economic indicators, both micro macro of our economy, are a true reflection of what the realities are in the various sectors of the economy. In other words, we must do well as businesses while we also do good. The funds we deploy must create jobs. We must be able to boost export. We must build capacity. We must guarantee prosperity for a significant number of our people and we must solve poverty amongst our population. As an administration, we are committed fully to implementing our team's developmental agenda and will continue to play the role expected of us as facilitators to ensure that we create an environment that is sustainable for growth and business to thrive in Lagos and by extension in our country. I want to thank you again. I want to say to you that indeed it's an honor to also be with you here at this year's Pankas Dinner. I wish you all a beneficial deliberations and a very great networking. Thank you very much and do enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for our governor for that um, goodwill message. Ladies and gentlemen, he has brought to fore the challenges and opportunities that COVID-19 has brought and he has said it has opened up opportunities to doing things very differently and he has appreciated the banking industry for their effort at revamping the industry. He himself has just presented his um, 2022 budget of consolidation, uh, consolidation with, uh, which is 1.388 trillion to the end that Lagos will not just be but will continue to inspire other states and remain the center of excellence. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause once again for our amiable governor. May I quickly recognize the presence of Honorable Adamu al Lawan, Commissioner of Finance, Budget and Economic Planning, Borno State. Thank you for that. I'd like to also recognize his counterpart from Gombe State, is also here. Please a round of applause for him. We'll do the full recognition later. And uh, His Excellency, the former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Otumba Femi Pedro, FCIB. A resounding round of applause for him, ladies and gentlemen. We also have with us um, uh, the DG Securities and Exchange Commission, Malan Lamido Yuguda, and his Executive Commissioner. A round of applause for them, ladies and gentlemen. Well, um, I like to say that we have come to a very important part of today's program. Um, it is said by a renowned um, orator that it's in the province of knowledge to speak.
Yes, Oliver Wendell, the American poet, did say that it's in the province of knowledge to speak and the privilege of wisdom to listen. Excellencies and very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's a time to listen with rapt attention to the keynote address and to introduce him, ladies and gentlemen, to do this on this auspicious occasion is um, the, M, the M Group Managing Director, CEO, Women Bank PLC. I'd like to invite Mr. Ademola Adebise, FCIB, for the presentation of the special guest of honor by the Chairman, 56 Annual Bankers Dinner Organizing Committee. Please a round of applause for um, Mr. Ademola Adebise, FCIB, as he does the need for. His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babachide Sonwolu. His Excellency, the Governor of Niger State, Elijah Abubakar Sani Belo. The Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, our boss, Mr. Godwin Mefele, CON FCIB, and the Committee of Governors. The President of Council, Mr. Bio, or Dr. Bayo Olubemi, FCIB, and his beautiful wife, the Managing Director of NDIC, uh, Mr. Azan Belo, all the office holders of our great institutes, my colleagues, fellow MDs of banks, uh, permit me to uh, stand on all existing protocols. I think my job this evening is uh, as you made very easy by the uh, previous speakers who has introduced the guest speaker for today quite eloquently but I think it's important that I do the job properly and um, it gives me great pleasure to see such an array of distinguished personalities here this evening at our annual dinner the 56th it is indeed a honor to have you here at this momentous occasion. I would like to, at this point, thank the President of our Council and the Governing Council and the Registrar of our Institute for giving me and my colleagues the opportunity to serve uh, in the Organizing Committee for this year's event. We do not take this for granted. You will all recall that the world was taken by storm in 2020 by the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and the ensuing challenges are entrusted on us a nation such you know a number of things like such as the decline in crude oil prices the attendant decline in government revenues foreign exchange earnings and output in key sectors of the economy these were the very dark days in this country. We are all privileged to have someone who took responsibility for mobilizing the banking community to take the lead in the response and the fight against the pandemic, thereby providing succor to individuals, businesses, and organizations that were hard hit by the negative effects of the pandemic. It led several remedial initiatives, such as the COVID Alliance, the monetary policy interventions, the social uh, intervention schemes, and the National Theatre Creative Hub project, amongst many others. All these interventions have contributed to the recovery of the economy, supported by inclusion, and hopefully seeded future growth. Distinguished audience, the person I'm talking about is no other person than the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefele, CON, FCIB.
The former President of the United States of America, Bill Clinton, once said, and I quote, no generation has had the opportunity as we now have to build a global economy that leaves no one behind. It is a wonderful opportunity, but also a profound responsibility, end of quote. Mr. Governor has lived up to this bidding. The banking industry in Nigeria under his watch has remained resilient, waxing stronger, and looking forward. Tonight is poised to share with us, this distinguished audience, highlights of the economy and the financial market developments in the last one year, and also show, provide insights into the economic outlook for the coming year. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased and honored to welcome the special guest of honor and the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Amefele, CON FCIB, to deliver his keynote speech. A round of applause as he approaches the podium. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, and our Banker Emeritus, Mr. Jide Sawulu, the Executive Governor of Niger State, Governor Abubakar Sanibelo, The President and Chairman of Council of the Chartered Institute of Bankers, Mr. Bayo Olubuimi, other very distinguished heads of agencies here, and I think it's fitting that I recognize the MD of um, Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, the Director General of Security and Exchange Commission, other very important dignitaries here present, Your Excellencies and our friends from our foreign community here in Nigeria, CEOs of banks, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Today, being the last Friday of the month of, of November, of every year is a day that I always look forward to. I look forward to this day not necessarily because of the keynote address I will be make I will be presenting, but also because it reminds me that after a very hard work in the course of the year that we are about to wind down and kick off into the yellow tight season. I therefore see this opportunity because I know we may not see each other again till, the, till maybe next year. See this opportunity to wish all of us a Merry Christmas and happy and prosperous 2022. Again, I say good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and I thank you all for the very warm reception accorded us here today. By now, I am sure everyone knows how I feel about this annual dinner, because since I became the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria over seven years ago, this is perhaps the one event I have never missed at all. So, to underscore how important this event is to me, let me repeat and say and stress by saying that this is my seventh consecutive keynote address at the Chartered Institute of Bankers annual dinner as the governor of the CBN. It is therefore a great pleasure for me to be here today 
because it provides a very stable platform and a significant opportunity for me to engage with all stakeholders, especially professionals, practitioners, and experts in the, in the banking and finance community. This dinner is an occasion to highlight important developments in our economy and apprise you of the policy initiatives and focus of the Central Bank of Nigeria towards realizing the ultimate goals of macroeconomic and financial stability in our country. I'd like to especially thank the leadership and fellows of the Charter Center of Bankers of Nigeria led by the President, Mr. Bayo Olubemi, and the Registrar, Mr. Sheya Wojobi, for their painstaking efforts towards the success of today's event. I also want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officers of Banks and other financial institutions who have found time to attend this dinner despite their very busy schedules. Let me also welcome my colleagues from the Central Bank of Nigeria, particularly our Deputy Governors, our Directors and some senior management members of staff of, of the bank. And I also like to thank the audience and members of the press for being part of this very beautiful occasion today. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in my remarks today, I intend to provide my views on developments in the Nigerian economy, as well as an outlook for how we see things going forward. As will be expected from an incisive analysis of any major economy in the world today. Let me begin with an initial background of the Nigerian economy before COVID-19. Prior to the start of the pandemic in 2019, our economy was making steady progress out of the difficulties from the global oil, oil price vagaries of the previous year. Indeed, our GDP growth rate for 2019 stood at 2.3% on the back of a relatively strong fourth quarter GDP of 2.55% that year. This growth was accompanied by significant foreign capital flows due to improved fundamentals of our economy. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, then came knocking the pandemic during the first quarter of 2020, and indeed, it's been close to two years since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and the wide-ranging impact it has had on not only global economy, but also on the Nigerian economy. We must all remember that while its economic damages have been enormous and will be highlighted soon, this pandemic is first and foremost a public health crisis instigated by a virus that has infected 259.7 million people and claimed the lives of 5.2 million people globally, including 2,974 of our fellow Nigerians and loved ones. Indeed, let me state that in May 2020, it would have been unlikely to hold an event of this nature with the number of people we have here today. Our ability to come together today is a reflection of the progress that has been made in containing the spread of this virus, as well as in supporting improved economic activity over the past two years. In my remarks today, I intend to provide my perspectives on the external and domestic impact of the pandemic and its attendant effects on the Nigerian economy. I'll also provide an outlook for the Nigerian economy as well as steps that the CBN is taking to support improved economic activity in Nigeria. <clears throat> on the global economy, as you may recall, 
2020 was a year like no other for the global economy and indeed the Nigerian economy. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in the early part of 2020 and the containment measures put in place to slow the spread of the virus led to an unprecedented decline in global growth last seen since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Most advanced and developing economies fell into a recession which led to a significant contraction in global growth by minus 3.1% in 2020. Global travels was also restricted as countries shut down their borders and restricted domestic and international travels. According to the latest economic impact report by World Trade and Tourism Council, the global travels and tourism sector lost about $4.5 trillion from the effects of the travel restriction, quarantines, and other related measures. Also, according to the International Labour Organization, in 2020, over 255 million full-time jobs were lost as a result of the pandemic. <clears throat> Some of the major events during the pandemic. During that period, we saw a volatile oil market. First, in view of the complete stoppage of global economic activities, we witnessed the significant reduction in the demand for and price of crude oil, Nigeria's main source of foreign exchange receipts and fiscal revenue. Indeed, the price of crude oil fell by more than 70% at some point. We witnessed the fall in crude oil prices from a high of $68 a barrel in January of 2020 to as low as $24 per barrel in April 2020. Put succinctly, as of 20th of April 2020, the price of some streams of crude oil fell below zero dollars per barrel as producers were forced to pay buyers for overwhelmed storage facilities. This fall had adverse implications on the supply of foreign exchange into the country as well as our government revenues. Another event is the deteriorating global financial conditions. Second, the global financial conditions tightened as investors withdrew over $120 billion in portfolio flows from emerging and frontier market countries during the first quarter of 2020. While flows began to recover in the early part of 2021, financial flows to emerging markets like Nigeria are constrained by expected tapering by the U.S. Fed in 2022, which is likely to affect global financial conditions. In essence, uncertainty about the evolution of the virus and the extent of its impact led to a retreat in investment from emerging markets and a corresponding rise in investment in safe haven assets, such as gold and the U.S. Treasury bills. The resulting outflow further heightened pressures on the currencies of major emerging market countries like Nigeria, and this ultimately resulted in the adjustment of our exchange rate. Another event was the spark in food prices. Third, following the provision of vaccines, countries began to ease movement restrictions and demand in certain sectors began to recover to pre-COVID levels. Unfortunately, the surge in demand has contributed to significant supply chain disruptions, which has contributed to elevated inflation in advanced and developing markets. For example, the Food and Agric Organization Food Price Index, which measures monthly change in international prices of a basket of food commodities in October 2021, stood at its highest level since July 2011 because of the initially exogenous supply disruptions I'm about to describe. Another event that we are seeing is deglobalization and supply disruptions. 
Finally, tragic as these outcomes were, even more alarming was the reaction of many countries at the height of the pandemic. All over the world, countries responded by fighting for themselves. They thought only about their citizens and not the citizens of other countries. Fighting for themselves and taking measures to protect their own people, regardless of the spillover effects on the rest of the world. According to the World Customs Organization, a total of 32 countries and territories adopted stringent and immediate export restrictions on critical medical supplies and drugs that were specifically meant to respond to COVID-19. As of the 4th of April 2020, an updated count of total number of export restrictions by Global Trade Alert Team at the University of Garland, Switzerland, suggests a total of 102 restrictions by 75 countries all over the world. On March 4th, 2020, Germany announced an export ban that applied to all sorts of medical protection gears, including breathing masks, medical gloves, and protective suits. Around the same time, President Macron announced that France will, requis will requisition all face masks produced in the country, a de facto export ban. Between 8th of February 2020 and 6th of April 2020, India released eight different export notifications banning several drugs and medical supplies, including hydroxychloroquine ventilators, oxygen therapy apparatus, and breathing devices. Also, due to fears of global recession, there were worries about unprecedented global food insecurity, with concerns that agricultural production may be dislocated by containment measures that constrain workers from planting, managing, and harvesting critical crops. Consequently, rather than seek cooperative and global solutions, several countries resorted to export restrictions of critical agricultural produce. Indeed, according to International Food Policy Research Institute, about 37 countries enacted various forms of food export restrictions in response to COVID-19, even in countries where average production exceeds domestic consumption. For example, <clears throat> Vietnam, the world's third largest exporter of rice, suspended granting rice export certificates until the country reviews domestic inventories. Russia, the world's largest wheat exporter announced a 10-day ban on the export of bulk, bulk wheat and rice due to concerns over panic buying in its local supermarkets. Ladies and gentlemen, the dire implications of these events should not be lost on everyone and indeed on us, Nigerians. A country with over 200 million people, as I've asked in some of my recent treatises on the opportunities of this pandemic. And the questions are, what if the pandemic occurs again and we witness an extended restriction in movements and export bans again? What if these restrictions become a new normal? What if another pandemic occurs in which all borders are closed with food and medical imports significantly curtailed? What if the rich among us, even when they can afford to pay for their medical bills abroad, cannot travel out of their shores because of these extended lockdowns. Indeed, and I'm sure we know, 
that in Nigeria we lost some very prominent people just because there was a global lockdown that also affected Nigeria. And I ask, are we going to allow our hospitals to remain in their current state without equipment and the state of the art facilities? For how long shall we continue to rely on the world for anything and for everything? That is a question we must answer as Nigerians. Global response. In a bit to contain the spread of the virus as well as the support the reco recovery of the global economy, there was an unprecedented deployment of fiscal and monetary support measures by countries, even though there was a significant divergence in the force of the response between advanced and developing countries. In 2020, advanced economies on average were able to deploy about 28% of their GDP in fiscal and monetary policy measures compared with only 6% in emerging markets and less than 2% in low-income countries. For example, the U.S. Fed increased its balance sheet from $4.1 trillion in January 2020 to over $8.6 trillion by October 2021 while the European Central Bank increased its balance sheet from 5.1 to $9.6 trillion over the same period. By the end of 2020, the Fed's balance sheet was 34% of its GDP. The European Central Bank's balance sheet was 59% of its GDP. The Bank of England was 40%. The Bank of Japan, 127%. While these measures, while measures were deployed by the developing and emerging market economies to support recovery efforts, their response was limited due to constrained fiscal and monetary space relative to their counterparts in the advanced countries. The impact of accommodative fiscal and monetary support in addition to the deployment of COVID-19 vaccines and the easing of restrictions on movements helped to support a significant recovery in global growth, which is expected to rise by 5.9% in 2021, up from minus 3.1% in 2020. The recovery of the global economy, however, has been uneven, given the wide divergence in accommodative policy measures and vaccine deployment by advanced economies relative to developing countries. While advanced countries are expected to grow by 5.2% in October, I mean in 2021, growth in sub-Saharan Africa is projected, is projected at 3.6% in 2021. In advanced countries like the United States and the UK, over 60% of their population have been fully vaccinated and efforts are underway in deploying a third dose to their citizens. We also witnessed how some advanced countries impose export restrictions on vaccines until a significant proportion of their population had been vaccinated. However, and unfortunately in Africa, less than 5% of the total population by October 2021 had been vaccinated. In Nigeria, less than 4 million people out of over 200 million people have been vaccinated. What a shame. Furthermore, the global economy has been affected by rising inflation and supply chain disruptions. The swift recovery in global demand <coughs> was not followed by a corresponding rise in supply of goods and services, which not only heightened inflationary pressures, but also contributed to significant supply disruptions. Average intercontinental freight rates for a 40-foot container rose from $1,500 in January 2020 to over $10,000 by September 2021. Naturally, this will result in increase in prices. 
The rise in freight rate along with demand pressures also help to support a significant rise in food prices. Reflecting this pressure, FAO food price index stood at its highest level in October 2021 since July 2011. Inflationary pressures in advanced and developing countries have been aggravated by rising commodity prices such as crude oil, which would likely reshape the accommodative monetary policy stance of major central banks in 2022. <clears throat> what has been the impact on the Nigerian economy? In Nigeria, the impact of these external factors as a result of COVID-19 pandemic have also worked to shape developments in our economy over the past year. Given our reliance on revenues from the export of commodities such as crude oil, the fall in crude oil prices from a high of $68 a barrel in January 2020 to $24 per barrel in April 2020 had adverse implications on the supply of foreign exchange into the country as well as on government revenues. While oil prices have risen to close to $80 today, OPEC restrictions on our production output along with the rising cost of petroleum imports have prevented us from being able to harness the gains from this unexpected rise in price of crude oil <coughs> on exchange rate. As a result of the drop in exchange, sup exchange supply arising from low earnings from the sale of crude oil, our Naira depreciated by 7.7% from 380 Naira to the dollar to 410 at the earning window. Supply was also affected by massive outflow of foreign, foreign portfolio investments from emerging and frontier markets, including Nigeria in 2020. A combination of these factors led to a marked drop in our foreign reserve from nearly 36.7 billion at the beginning of the crisis in March 2020 to a low of 32.9 in June 2021. It is important to state that the volume of activities at the, at the investors and exporters window fell from nearly 250 to 300 million dollars daily during the high points pre-COVID to less than 40 million dollars daily during the first quarter of 2021. Third, the imposition of containment measures as well as the rising cost of imported goods due to supply destruction helped to aggravate inflationary pressures during the second half of 2020. Our inflation rate rose from 12.12% in January 2020 to 18.17% in March 2021. Part of the rise in inflation was due to the surge in demand that arose from the easing of restrictions on, on, on movements, which led to a growing disparity between demand orders and output from factories and farms, not only in Nigeria, but in other parts of the world. Heightened demand along with these adjustments in our exchange rates, farmer headers clashes, imported inflation, insecurity in parts of the food belt region, and rising transportation costs were some of the key factors that drove the increase in inflation rates in Nigeria. Consequently, the pandemic and its attendant effects reordered the parts of our key macroeconomic and financial indicators after the gains we had achieved following the impact of the 2015 to 2017 oil price crisis. As a result of these effects, the Nigerian economy fell into a second recession in four years during the third quarter of 2020. However, the banking sector remained robust and sound due to prompt response by the central bank in order to prevent an economic crisis from spilling over into a financial crisis. As a result, the banking sector continued to consolidate on its gains of the recovery from 2016 and 17 recession. Although we saw some fragilities in the system, key, they constituted limited risk, risks. Prudential indicators such as the non-performing loans ratio stood at 5.4% in November 2021, while capital adequacy ratio in the banking industry remained above 
indicating continued resilience of our banking system. What were the response from the monetary authorities? The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic provided many lessons that has helped to shape subsequent actions by our monetary policy authorities. For example, we already realized how vulnerable our economy was relative to advanced markets in not only access to essential medical supplies, but in the form of monetary policy support that central banks in developing countries could provide in supporting the recovery of their respective economies. Rather than let the crisis compound our problems, we reflected on ways in which we could turn the crisis into an opportunity. One that will reset the trajectory of our economy from its dependence on imported items to one that is more resilient and productive. And that is the journey that we are determined today that we must continue, that we must diversify our economy, that we must, we must as Nigerians, fold our sleeves and do this by ourselves and not rely on others. With the pace at which the vi viruses are spreading, which could significantly derail economic growth, we were further emboldened to work on measures that would improve productivity, support employment generation, and strengthen the resilience of our economy. As a result, working with our fiscal authorities, we took unprecedented measures to contain the effects of the pandemic on our economy, in addition to other efforts aimed at stimulating greater economic activity in key sectors of our country, of our economy. What were some of the measures that we took to contain the, the COVID-19? First, the central bank working with fiscal authorities in stimulating strong policy support measures capped under the economic sustainability plan, which was designed to contain the effects of the pandemic, restore stability to the economy by helping households and businesses affected by the pandemic, and to lift the economy out of the woods through massive interventions to critical sectors. Under this plan, the CBN and the fiscal authorities collectively mobilized and injected over 5 trillion naira to support households and businesses. It is gratifying to state that the Central Bank of Nigeria deployed more than 3.5 trillion naira, about 4.1% of Nigeria's GDP, to critical sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing, electricity, and healthcare in order to stimulate and help the economy recover from the deep shock. Other specific policy measures undertaken include A. Reduction in monetary policy rate from 13.5 to 11% to improve the flow of credit to households and businesses. B. Reduction of interest rate on CBN intervention loans from 9 to 5%. C. Extension of the moratorium on principal repayments for CBN intervention facilities to March 2022. D. We granted regulatory forbearance that allowed banks restructured loans given to sectors severely impacted by the pandemic. E, we strengthened the loan to deposit ratio policy, which has resulted in a significant rise in loans provided by financial institutions. a couple of measures. For instance, we mobilized key stakeholders in the Nigerian economy under the private sector coalition CACOVID team. We raised 39.646 billion to support the fight against the scourge. 
The funds were used to support three key priority areas. Development of 39 fully equipped isolation centers, including ICUs and molecular testing labs, and procurement of medical equipment, such as PCR test kits, across the country. The CBN also created a $1 trillion facility in loans to boost local manufacturing and production across critical sectors of our country. We created a $100 billion intervention fund for the pharmaceutical companies and health practitioners to expand and strengthen the capacity of healthcare institutions. So far, over $107.7 billion has been released to support 111 healthcare projects, including six green fields and eight, 108 expansionary brown fields. The journey so far and our scorecard. As a result of these measures, we witnessed robust economic recovery as GDP growth stood at 4.03% during the third quarter of 2021, following the 5.01% growth recorded during the second quarter of 2021. The economy has remained on a positive growth path for four consecutive quarters after the recession during the third quarter of 2020. 41 out of 46 sectors assessed during the third quarter of, by MBS recorded positive growth as growth was driven by significant improvements in our non-oil sector. Our interventions, particularly in the manufacturing and the agricultural sector, significantly helped to encourage continuous improvement in growth in these two key sectors of our economy. Today, our food production systems have become more sustainable due to the improved output at our farms and local factories. Output of staple commodities such as rice, maize, palm oil, and tomatoes have grown significantly and we have also seen increased efforts of our local manufacturing firms to engage in backward integration efforts. On inflation, inflation has continued to moderate for seven consecutive months as it declined from 18.17% in March 2021 to 15.9% in October 2021. On reserves, supported by a demand management policy, in addition to support from successful issuance of the 4 billion euro bond and IMF SDR, our reserves today stand at over 41 billion dollars, which is enough to support over nine months of imports. This is not just a moral booster for both foreign direct and portfolio investors willing to invest in the economy, but it provides significant firepower to support our domestic industries that need import to import critical machines. On exchange rates, as a result of our demand management again, the Naira has remained largely stable at 411, sometimes moving to up to about 415 at the INA window since the since discontinuation of FX allocation to broad exchange operators along with the convergence between the CBN and FX rates. Our current account deficit has narrowed significantly from a huge deficit of 4.53% of GDP in the fourth quarter of 2020 to minus 0.44% of GDP during the second quarter of 2021 due to a surplus position in the goods account. What our outlook? Following the impact of the various accommodative policy measures, our economy made a swift exit from the recession. Unlike the five quarters it took to exit the previous recession, the economy rebounded after just two quarters of contractions, underpinning the resilience of the economy amidst greater policy support. I'm delighted to note that growth has returned to pre-COVID levels due to the accommodative policy support provided by the CBN and our government. Our focus for 2022. I'd like to state that notwithstanding these positive indicators, our economic growth remains fragile as our unemployment and inflation rate remains at levels that are not very supportive of growth. 
Second, continued implementation of our intervention efforts would need to be undertaken to sustain the recovery efforts and stimulate further growth of the economy. Third, given the population growth rate of about 2.7% annually, it is important that we continue to deploy measures that will enable our economy to attain annual growth rate of above 5%. Through the pandemic, we are aware that our policy responses are often more effective when we work with the private sector. For example, the COVID Alliance played an instrumental role in reducing the negative effects of the pandemic by providing palliative support to families affected by the virus. As a result, all efforts in 2022, we dare say, must be geared to ensure that we maintain our focus on improving access to finance and credit for households and businesses, mobilizing investment to boost domestic productivity, enabling faster growth of non-oil exports and supporting employment generation generating activities. Our 100 by 100 product, product, production project. In an effort to implement policies that would engender growth and employment, the CBN recently unveiled the 100 for 100 policy on production and productivity. Under this program, targeted credit of up to 5 billion naira will be provided to 100 firms every 100 days, provided that these firms are investing in projects that are greenfield projects. Second, projects will be assessed on their ability to generate significant employment opportunities in critical sectors of our economy. Third, eligible firms must show evidence of their efforts to harness available local raw materials towards the realization of their intended investments. Efforts will also be made to support firms that are geared towards producing goods for the export market. The CBN is committed to supporting eligible firms with foreign exchange to import machineries and equipment. And let me add that routine audits will be conducted on firms that receive funding to ensure that they are complying with the terms of the program. We will also, during this period, be supporting the growth of our digital economy. A key focus of the CBN under, under, under our leadership has been the enabling or build out of robust payment system infrastructure in Nigeria that will provide cheap, efficient, and faster means of conducting payments for most Nigerians. With the growing pace of digitalization globally, it is essential that we leverage digital channels in fulfilling this objective. Total transactions volumes using digital channels more than doubled between 2018 and 2020, as volumes rose from 1.3 billion to over 3.3 billion financial transactions in 2020. Now, notwithstanding these gains, close to 36% of adult Nigerians do not access our financial services in Nigeria. So we will also be doing everything possible using digital channels to deepen financial inclusion during this period. On eNaira, it is in this vein that the CBN recently deployed the first central bank digital currency in Africa. The eNaira, which would help in attaining our goals of fostering growth in greater inclusion using digital channels, supporting cross-border payments for businesses and firms, and providing a reliable channel for remittance inflows into Nigeria. The eNaira will ensure that Nigerians in remote areas can conduct financial services using their digital device at little or no cost. On infrastructure, with the decline in revenues due to federal and state governments as a result of reduced receipts from the sale of crude oil, alternative ways of funding infrastructure are critical if we are to ensure sustained growth of our economy. As we are all aware, the cost of logistics is often seen as a significant impediment to the growth of businesses in the country. In recognition of the role in 
role improved infrastructure could play in the development of our economy, along with the need to leverage private sector capital in funding over 35 trillion Naira deficit, which is the estimated amount required to build an efficient infrastructure system in Nigeria. The CBN, working in partnership with critical stakeholders such as the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority and the AFC, set up the InfraCor. InfraCor is expected to raise over 15 trillion in its first phase to support investment in critical infrastructure in Nigeria. Let me say that we are happy that all the logistics, all the approvals that are needed for the effective takeoff of, of InfraCorp has already been obtained and this, the InfraCorp is already evaluating three projects in Nigeria that will cost almost close to about 1.5 trillion Naira, which will be our first set of assets that will be handled under the infrastructure corporation. Now, we also do intend to mobilize international capital. A key challenge to supporting the growth in key sectors of our economy is access to large pools of cheap investment capital. Today, over $100 trillion is held by institutional investors in OECD countries, most of it invested in low yielding assets relative to high yielding opportunities in Nigeria. And working to tap into this pool of funds will require the setup of an investment framework that offers comfort and security to investors seeking to invest in critical sectors of our economy. As a result, the CBN is working, is working to set up the International Financial Center at a core Atlantic city in Lagos that will serve as a hub for attracting domestic and external capital which is needed to strengthen our post-COVID economy. Our International Financial Center, when fully operational in the second quarter of 2022, will help to position Nigeria as a key destination for investment in Africa. So in concluding, let me say Let me add that while we have been able to contain some of the effects of COVID-19 pandemic, our economy, it is imperative that we work to build a more resilient economy that is better able to contain external shocks whilst supporting growth and wealth creation in key sectors of our economy. We must take deliberate steps to diversify the base of the Nigerian economy. As the true African giant, we must fold our sleeves and do everything possible to stop the incidence of importing anything and everything. I believe that what happened, the lessons from COVID-19, the lessons from the lockdown that we witnessed in 2020, are enough for us to know that as a country with a population of over 200 million people, that it is time for us to do these things ourselves. It is time for us to deploy all resources that we have to help diversify the base of our economy. I am optimistic that this can be done because Nigeria possesses both the human and material talents that can do this. Nigerians in any part of the world have always stood tall in all that they do. And I believe that we working together as Nigerians should be able to bring our country to the level that it truly deserves as a giant of Africa. So I want to thank all of you for being here today but I think the message remains that we all need to work together for the growth of our economy and be less reliant on others. I thank you all.
I think the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, deserves a better round of applause. An in-depth presentation there. I had a few fears when he started asking those questions. What if? What if? What if? But the circa came towards the end of his presentation when he provided the answers to the what ifs. And um, some of the things I'm going home with tonight is that come 2022, there will be a focus on access to finance and deepening financial inclusion. In I, in the Inara being the first in Nigeria and Africa will indeed grow in lips and bounds come 2022. Please can we put our hands together once again for Mr. Godwin Abifiri. Thank you very much. At this point in time, Mr. Governor, the Governor of Lagos State, Your Excellency, the Governor of Niger State, the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, indeed all courtesies duly extended. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be going on to the award presentation. It's not my forte to um, coordinate that part. I will be inviting three very distinguished gentlemen in the banking industry who will coordinate very quickly the award presentation. I have the honor of inviting the MD Chief Executive Officer, Standard Chartered Bank of Nigeria, Standard Chartered Bank, beg your pardon, and the Chairman of the Awards Committee. Please could you put your hands together for Mr. Lamine Majai, SCIB. Also to please come up stage is the MD Chief Executive Officer, Kauri Asset Management, Mr. Johnson Chuku, SCIB. And last but not the least, the Registrar Chief Executive Officer, CIBN, Dr. Sheye Awujobi, SCIB. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I now cede the microphone to Mr. Lamin Majan. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Madam MC. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, good evening to you all. Um, we have now come to the awards uh, part of this uh, ceremony. And um, it gives me great pleasure to announce um, the first two categories of the awards. And then I will hand over to uh, Sheyi to give us the second two categories and Johnson will give us uh, the third category. So with that, uh, we'll start with the X Factor Award, which recognizes a leading female banker, breaking the glass ceiling and inspiring a more gender inclusive industry. This category is expected to feature a mid-career and C-suit or top-ranging female business leader. It now gives me great pleasure to invite the Deputy Governor, Central Bank of Nigeria, Mrs. Aisha Ahmad, to come and present this award. So you can see the nominees for this category um, on the screen. Omolola Fashehin, Olaronke King, Mojishola Bakare, Chinwe Egwim, Olaitan Martins, and Temitope Dali. 
And now the Deputy Governor will announce the winner. Congratulations, um, Olaronke. The second category is the Affiliate of the Year, and this recognizes an industry affiliate or agent whose performance has enhanced the industry's goal of financial inclusion. It's now my pleasure to invite the former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Femi Pedro, to present this award. And the nominees for this category, you can see it's Axilarex, AppZone, Paystack, OP, Tashi Development, Unified Payment Systems, and ITEX. And I would now like to hand over the mic to the uh, deputy, former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Fabi Pedro, to announce the winner. It's a great pleasure to have this opportunity to announce the Affiliate of the Year Award among these great nominees. And the winner is, give you a few seconds. <laughs> few more seconds. And the winner is Paystack Payments Limited. A louder round of applause, please. Is uh, Paystack in the house? Somebody to represent Paystack. A friend of the company. Okay, somebody is coming. Is somebody coming for Paystack? 
Okay, if there is nobody, I will receive the award on behalf of Facebook. So please give me a round of applause. Congratulations, Space Park. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. The next award is the next generation customer. This award recognizes a business in an, in, in an identified strategic sector that has been catalyzed by the industry support. It is my singular honor and privilege to invite His Excellency Al Haji Abubakar Sani Belo, the Governor of Niger State, to please help announce the winner. The nominees are Fit Agro Allied Limited and Salsin Designer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am happy to announce the winner of the Next Generation Customer Award, which goes to Faith Agro Limited. Thank you, Your Excellency. Fit Agro Alike, do we have the representative to please come forward? Someone is coming. Let's give him a round of applause. I'm sure you can do better. Thank you, sir. The next category of awards is actually what all of us have experienced and what the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria had played so much a role and the entire banking industry, and that is COVID-19 Response Banker of the Year. This award recognizes employees that innovatively stepped up beyond the call of duty in the fight against COVID-19 to ensure business continuity despite the scourge of the pandemic. I have the singular honor and privilege to invite His Excellency Mr. Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sowolu, to please help us present this award. Your Excellency, you are most welcome, sir. 
Indeed, we will give the announcement to the governor to announce. Thank you very much. Yes. So the COVID-19 Response Banker of the Year Award goes to Amechi Okaobi and Dr. Shegun Ogoa. Okay, Amechi is of Access Bank and Dr. Shegun is of First Bank. Amechi Ogoa, Amechi Okaobi, Access Bank and Dr. Shegun Ogoa of First Bank. Dr. Dr. Shegun here. Okay, somebody from First Bank, I'm sure, can come and collect for Dr. Shegun. Oh, he's coming himself. Ah, oh, that, that's good. Eh? Eh? I can, I can actually validate that. <laughs> this, this, this indeed. He did a lot. He did a lot. Congratulations. Well done. You've been watching the live event, the CBN 56th Annual Bankers' Dinner, holding at the Federal Palace Hotel, Victoria Island, Lagos. It's still Channel's television, and please stay with us as we return to our studios for a continuation of our regular programming.